All leaders must learn the basic family is a decent citizen. But the day before he sends the combines into the field, a hailstorm comes along and beats his crop into the ground and it's gone, it's lost. So this time it didn't work. So now what must the farmer do? He's got to decide whether to do it again or not. Shall we take another chance in the next spring? We would advise him to do so, even though he lost everything in the last harvest. And it didn't work. You didn't reap what you said. But here's the law of averages. Here's the odds. More often than not, you reap what you sow. More often than not, you'll have a harvest if you plant in the spring. There's no guarantee, but more often than not. And guess what more often than not is? Pretty good odds. It's better than lost egg. The law of sowing and reaping. Next, one of the most important laws to learn is the law of averages. If you do something often enough, you'll get a ratio of results. Once you understand that, you know, the world is yours. Learning to employ people in the unique thing called the law of averages is stunning in its result in terms of fortune. Let's say you're in sales and you talk to 10 people just getting started. If you talk to 10, you get one. We now have what we call the beginning of a ratio. Talk to 10, nine say no, one says yes. I'll buy your product, I'll take your service. Somebody says, well, one out of 10 isn't that good. Well, you're just getting started. Because here's what happens with the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. If you talk to 10 and get one, chance is excellent. If you talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. In baseball, we call it batting average. Swing 10 times, get a hit. Swing 10 times, get a hit. Nobody bats 9 out of 10. So you don't have to be perfect here. All you have to do is understand the law of averages. Now, even if you're only getting 1 out of 10, you can now start to compete. If you've been here a long time, you can get 9 out of 10. I just joined. I can only get 1 out of 10. I'm telling you, if we have a contest, I will beat you. Say, well, you're just started. How could you beat me? It's very simple. If we have a 30-day run on a contest or a 60-day run, while you talk to 10 and get 9, I will talk to 100 and get 10. I win. Isn't that clever? Here's what I do if I'm new. I make up in numbers what I lack in skill. I make up in numbers what I first lack in skill. Now, when my skills increase, I don't have to do 100 to get 10. Once you understand the law of averages, I'm telling you, it's so exciting to work with the law of averages. The law of averages works in our little money plan here. You know, chances are excellent if you have this little plan. I'm telling you, chances are excellent. It'll work, it'll work, it'll work. The ratios will work for you. Here's what else is exciting. The law of averages can be increased. At first, you only get 1 out of 10, but the better you get, the more skills you develop. Now you get 2 out of 10 and then 3 out of 10. And you don't need more than about two, three out of ten to get rich. In working with people, there's a unique story about the law of averages. It says the sower went out to sow the seed. Number one, he had excellent seed or a great story to tell and a good product to sell. And it says the, the sower was ambitious, got up early in the morning and went out to do the deal. 
So good seed, ambitious sower, and he starts to sow the seed. But here's what happens. Make the notes. The first part of the seed that he sowed, the birds got, and the birds are going to get some. John said, yes, I will come check out the meeting, see if that's an opportunity for me. He says, I will be there on Tuesday night. Tuesday night comes, John isn't there. So I wonder where he is. The birds, whatever form they come in. And he's not there. Somebody stole the seed. Somebody robbed him of the opportunity. Guess what you can do about it? Nothing. Well, you could chase birds, but I'm telling you, it's, a, it's not a good deal. You say, well, I'll get a hold of John, whoever talked him out of coming, I'll go straighten them out. I'm telling you, you've asked for more than you can handle. Here's what you should do. Here's what the sower did. He kept sowing the seed. Here's what you can do if you stay busy. Sow more than the birds can get. Just de depend on the law of averages. Not trying to straighten out every problem. So the birds are going to get some. Now it says he kept sowing the seed, and now the seed falls on rocky ground where the soil is shallow, and the little plant starts to grow, but the first hot day, it withers and dies. So make the note that the hot weather is going to get some. You recruit somebody, and they join, say, hey, I'm going to really do great here. And two days later, somebody says, boo, and they quit. The first hot day. So what can you do about that? Nothing. Because if you start chasing, trying to fix this, I'm telling you, it's unfixable. But here's what you can do to fix your future. Keep doing like the sower did. He kept on sowing. And you can't be responsible for the shallow ground. That's somebody else's responsibility. So here's the third key now. He's keep sowing the seed, and now the seed falls on thorny ground. And this time the little plant starts to grow again, but the thorns choke it to death, and it dies. So make the note, the thorns are going to get some. Here's what it called the thorns in this little story. The cares of life, little duties, little distractions. I said, John, we had a meeting last night. How come you weren't here? John says, well, I can't make every meeting. I said, why not? He said, well, the screen door came off the hinges. You just can't let your house fall apart. you got to take time and fix, fix, fix. I can hear the thorns. He said, some extra trash piled up in the garage. You just can't let mountains of trash pile up in your garage. What can I do about that? People let little things cheat them out of big opportunities. And sometimes it's a little heartbreaking to watch, especially if it's somebody you care about. But there are some things, remember, you can't straighten out. You just got to depend on something else for your fortune and your future. But now let's go to the rest of the story. Here's what it says. Finally, the sower keeps sowing the seed. Now it falls on good ground. Underline this, good ground. And it always will. If you keep sharing a good idea, it will someday fall on good ground. Productive ground, receptive ground, decision-making ground. Now, it was interesting, though, about the ground. Here's what it said about the ground. Some of this good ground now produce 30%, some produce 60%, and some produce 100%. What's that called? The law of averages. Everybody's not going to do the same. Everybody doesn't have the same ambitions. And you can't straighten this out now. You just have to take it like it comes. It's like the seasons. You can't rearrange them and say, I'll take two springs, three summers. No, you've got to take them like they flow. But now how do you get 100 percenters? Some will produce 100 percent. How do you get some 100 percenters? You've got to go through the birds and you've got to go through the hot weather and you've got to go through the choking thorns and you've got to sort of put up with those, you know, that haven't got much ambition, 30, 60 percenters, and you'll get some 100 percenters. The law of averages is at work in the university. Are there as many seniors as there are freshmen? You say, why is that? It, it's a mystery. The inevitable erosion of life says there's always going to be more freshmen than seniors. Not every race that started does everybody finish. The answer is no. Some people don't want to finish. Some people plant in the spring and leave in the summer. And you can't straighten that out. Here's what you can do. Keep telling the story. Keep sharing a good idea. And I'm telling you, it will work for you. So here's what we say. If you want a lot of graduating seniors, you must keep loading the freshman class. The law of averages. It's one of the greatest studies to make. It'll serve you well in your business career, your sales career, any kind of career. One more on the law of averages. There's an old rule, and it's been around a long time, that says 20% of the people do 80% of the business and 80% do 20%. And this is something you don't try to change or rearrange. It's part of the deal. Somebody says, well, I'll just fire the 80%. And say, no, because whoever's left, 20% of them will do 80% and 80 will do 20%. That's not something you mess with. Here's what these laws are. Something you work with, something you understand and you work with. 
20 are going to do 80. And it works everywhere. Ask the minister of the church. Who puts up the money here to support the church? He says 20% of the people pick up 80% of the tab and 80% pick up 20%. Americans paying taxes, what's the deal? 20% pay 80% of the taxes and 80% pay 20% of the taxes to run the federal government. This is not something you mess with. This is something you work with till you understand it. Well, how do you work with the 80-20? Here's what you got to do. Part of it's time management. You can only give 20% of your time to the 80% because they're only producing 20%. Now you can give 80% of your time to the 20%. Now remember, the pull is in the opposite direction. Guess who wants 80% of your time? The wrong group the wrong group. Now, not this is not a moral question. The wrong group in terms of productivity and effectiveness in your business, your future. So what's the answer to that? Here's part of the answer. You can work individually with the 20%, but you can only work by group with the 80%. However, guess who usually wants your individual time? The 80%. And you cannot do that. That's the law of averages. Here's the next important law. It's called the law of faith. We covered it a little bit earlier in a fairly simple form. Faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. Faith, though, can turn difficulty into reality, positive reality. And I just want to give you this quick little line up here because it's so important to ponder it and, and then work it. Here's what faith is for. Number one, faith is the ability to see it as it is. Faith doesn't mind seeing it as it is because faith is a miracle worker. Faith does not ignore the negative. Faith uses the negative. Because if there was no negative, there'd be no need for faith. If everything is okay, what would you need faith for? You need faith because it isn't okay. Now, what isn't okay? Who knows? The situation that isn't okay isn't okay. So here's what faith does. Number one, faith does not ignore the negative because faith now stands as the miracle worker if you let it work. So faith sees it as it is. If it's ugly, it's ugly. If it isn't working, it isn't working. If it's a mess, it's a mess. It doesn't hurt to call a mess a mess. You don't need to fancy it up here. If it's broke, it's broke. If it's miserable, it's miserable. Faith doesn't mind admitting that. Faith doesn't mind seeing that. Here's why. Number one, you can see it as it is. That's the beginning of faith, seeing it as it is. Now, here's the second step of faith. See it better than it is. Couldn't you see beyond the mess? The mess is for today. Couldn't you look into tomorrow? The answer is, yes, I guess I could look into tomorrow. Humans have this incredible ability to look into tomorrow, to look into next week. So we not only have the ability to see it as it is, the beginning of faith, but to see it better than it is. Dream the dreams. Make the plans. Visualize. Use your imagination. See it better than it is. Now here's the third step that turns faith into reality. Make it better than it is. Faith now must be invested in the muscle. But if you invest faith now in the action, you can take any situation and make it better than it is. Next, in the beginning of faith, seeing it as it is. Don't see it worse than it is. Don't blow it out of proportion. Some people have this tendency to blow it all out of proportion and say, well, it can't be that bad. If it's this bad, that's how bad it is. You don't need to multiply how bad it is by 10. That's not necessary here. Just as it is, that's the deal, as it is. Don't see it worse than it is. Now, here's the next unique key to faith. Don't see it for more than it can become. There's a thin line between faith and folly. Yes, it's possible to see yourself as a millionaire, but not overnight. Somebody says, well, yes, I can see that. Don't see it for more than it can become in a reasonable period of time. Yes, if it dropped out of the sky overnight, but that's not likely. But it's still possible to be a millionaire. It's still possible to be rich and wealthy, given a certain amount of time working with the law of averages and all the rest of the stuff we've talked about today. So don't see it for more than it can become so that you move into folly instead of faith. Plenty is possible without being foolish in your faith exercise. 
But now here's two more cautions. Number one, it might be worse than you first see it. You better look underneath. Because sometimes you just look at the surface. You better take a look. So that you can really see it as bad as it is. Not to overblow it now, but to make sure you see it as bad as it really is. Now here's the next one. Give yourself a chance to understand that it could be far more in the future than what you can first see. By faith, here's all you can see. The miracles that we see here gives us a certain amount of faith, but it looks like we need some more, we need some more. But you take the first step. Take the first step of what you can see, but give yourself a chance to be able to see it for more than what you first see it. On a foggy night, if all you can see is 100 feet, here's what you do. Walk that first 100 feet, now you can see another 100 feet. You can't see the 200 feet. But if you can see 100 feet, you walk the first 100 feet, now you can see another 100 feet. So I'm asking you to take the early steps of faith, whatever you can see it possible to become. Start believing that. Have faith for that. And I'm telling you, as that starts to exercise, you'll be able to see it for more and for more and for more. The possibilities will start to increase in your own imagination. The law of use. And it goes something like this. Whatever you don't use, you lose. Lack of use causes loss on this planet. Maybe not the next one, but on this one. If you tie your arm to your body, leave it there long enough, you'll never use it again. It's over for the arm. Now, it may not be over, but it's over for the arm. The only way to keep the use of this arm is what? Keep using it. If you quit, you lose automatically. They don't bring it up for a vote. You lose automatically when you quit. Now, the same thing that goes for your arm goes for your brain, mentality. The same thing goes for all the human virtues. Ambition, unused, declines. Strong feelings, unused, diminish. It doesn't grow, it diminishes. Faith, unused, decreases. It's a law. Vitality, unused, diminishes. Energy, unused, decreases. The guy says, well, I'm going to save up my energy. You can't do that. That's like trying to save today, put it on the end of the year. See, you can't do that. They'll come take you away. If you don't use today, what? It's lost. The guy says, well, I'll work twice as hard tomorrow to make up for it. See, that's foolish. You could have done that anyway. Today unused is lost. A talent unused is lost. An ability unused is lost. So here's one of the key expressions of the evening. Take a new inventory of yourself. Starting tomorrow, new project. Take a new inventory. And make sure that all of your talent and ability and mentality and ingenuity and vitality and strong feelings, faith, courage, make sure that all you've got is being used. Otherwise, you lose. Now, one of the best illustrations of the law of use is a Bible story called the parable of the talents. The talent story. Interesting story if you haven't read it in a while. Just review it. It's a good story. An ancient story says there was a master with three servants. He got them together one day and he said to the three, I've got these talents. And in those ancient days, a talent was a measure of gold. And he said to the three servants, take these talents and see what you can do with them while I'm gone. He said, I'm taking a journey and I'll be gone for a while. When I come back, we'll get together, go over the book, see how you did. He said, here's five of these talents for you. Five. Here's two of them for you. Two. And here's one for you. One. The master said, take those talents, see what you can do with them. When I come back, we'll get together, we'll go over it all. The servant said, okay, master takes off. According to the ancient story, the master comes back from his trip. When he gets back, he gets the three servants together. And as he said he would, he asks, how did it go with those talents? You were five. What happened? That servant said, well, I took the five talents you gave me and I put them to work. A little shaky at first, but he said things finally got rolling. And he said, I poured it on. And he said, my talents grew to seven, eight, nine, ten. He said, I doubled my talents from five to ten. Books will show. Master said. 
one heck of a job. Or something like that. He said, I gave you two talents. What happened? That servant said about the same thing happened to me. I put those two talents to work, poured it on. They grew to three and then to four. He said, I doubled my talents from two to four. Books will show. Master said, well done. He said, I gave you one talent. What happened? That servant said, well, I took the talents you gave me and I carefully wrapped it and I dug a hole and buried it and camouflaged it, I suppose, right? so nobody would steal it. And he said, fortunately, nobody got it. And he said, I knew you were going to be here today, so I dug it up. Here it is, safely wrapped. I did not lose it while you were gone. According to the ancient story, the master said, take that talent away from him and give it to the man that's got ten. Now you might say, well, I don't like that arrangement. The poor guy's only got one talent. He's already got ten. 